Hi, Kenneth. Okay. Firstly, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for your patience. We have here 7,006, 8,007. I, I'm so grateful that to always, I'm always grateful to have an opportunity to work on one of these because I have such, I love these movements so much. They're so nice and so underrated. Absolutely excellent, excellent movements. This is a good example of this model. You, you talked about having searched for one of these um, and looking for the things that uh, I had recommended, which thank you such as a scratched crystal, but then through the scratched crystal, we see the beautiful, perfect white loom. And that is a great sign. And you're correct. And as you can see, unrestored, this watch is still running. But these Dyni watches, that's what they will do. They will run. Look at the shine on that movement. Okay, it should be pretty straightforward. I don't think this one has a lot of miles. Uh, let me see what's going on with it. Okay, well, also talking about the excellence of Seiko's um, casing system, uh, water tried desperately to get into this watch. So we do have some corrosion around the inside, but the way these work is water can get in here and then it stops at the seal here. Uh, the SUA system, I kind of like more because the, the case threading is inside of the seal rather than outside of it. I don't think it's going to be real gnarly. Uh, and as we can see, the water didn't get in, but I'm going to have some cleaning that's going to go in there. Yeah, I did over here. Well, we'll get that all cleaned up shouldn't be major. The most important part, of course, is the sealing surface, which on these case backs is this flat surface right there. And that looks fine. Okay. Yeah, the uh, water did really try, but what's amazing, you know, we actually, we have pitting underneath. There's pitting underneath the bezel there, but it didn't get through the it didn't get through this the standard tension ring crystal. The ceiling surfaces there are good. It's pretty dirty. You can see the pitting in there. Or the, not the pitting. You can see the corrosion. There's going to be a little pitting, but I don't think it's going to be bad. But despite all this water desperately trying to get inside, there's the underneath of the crystal, the bezel there. We look at the dial. Look at that. It's beautiful. Perfect. Perfect hands. This never been apart. Nobody's ever taken those hands off. Look at how they're just absolutely immaculate. Okay. Okay. Starting to took me a while to get that case cleaned out. There was a pretty serious. Well, there's just a lot of little stuff, a lot of little things. So, but in the meantime, pulling this apart. This is our back of the movement, and again, despite all that corrosion. This came out pretty well. Something always fun to see about these two is that it's got uh, one reverse thread screw, and that's why you have the, the 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 triple lines on the top that tells you that it's it screws the other way, which is an important thing to think about. Come on, get out of there! That's what I get for trying to be clever. Never a good idea, me trying to be clever. Let's see now. Come out, 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 out. And there that is. Okay. And there it is. That's the almighty Paul lever, the magic lever that'll wind both ways. Such a simple, strong solution. It's one of the reasons why Seiko was confident enough about not making these hand winding at all, because they don't need it. 
because the automa the, the magic lever system, darn it, the magic lever system is so efficient. That, however, is a standard one. Would you come out of there? The, these just, that's the great thing about these movements is they're so simple, relatively speaking, but that does, simple doesn't mean crude. It means, you know, refined in the sense that it doesn't have anything extra that it doesn't need. So you can see that, look at that, pretty clean, huh? Look at the underneath of that bridge. Isn't that beautiful? I've got to pull the pull lever out of there so that all can get cleaned up. I'll do that. That little wash, that little spring washer there is always fun to remove. I'm going to do that in person. And here's this stuff. All these great simplifications they did, like not, I mean, this is your, your click lever not having, not actually needing to be screwed to the plate. It just, it's not necessary. And they figured that out and they... They didn't do it. Boy, this watch. God, I love Seiko's case sealing system. None of that, all that water, it lived clearly in a wet environment with a, and the it, water never got inside. That's so nice. I think we get a little bit of wear in there. That mainspring arbor port there, I'll have to look at that and see. Uh, but the rest of it looks pretty decent. Okay, well, let me let me get in there. I need to leave anyway. You do? Oh, okay. I need work to do. You need work to do? I have work to do. Oh, you have work to do. Okay. So your lower mainspring arbor port isn't... That's this little port right here. And it's it is definitely, you can see... Okay, so you've got the, the, this is the date dial guard, this plate right here. And then underneath that, you can see the hole for the mainspring arbor. And it's a little blown out on one side. You can see that it started, the barrel started impacting the underneath of the train bridge right there. See, it started scraping along on the bottom. Not a huge amount, but it did. So we got to get that going. Um, here is the, the magnificence of the Paul lever assembly. Just these two, just this very, very simple setup. Amazing thing. So anyway, uh, that's gotta be a jewel and get that going. And here we are, fresh out of the cleaner. Isn't that nice? There's the new lower jewel there in place. Looking sharp. Start working on it. And here it is from the other side. I have the case the mid case is, I, I have it in a chemical solution to get rid of the last of the corrosion. There's some pitting in there, as I said. Um, I, the sealing surfaces are fine, so that's not a problem. I just want to get the rest of the corrosion. Uh, your, um, your bezel came up beautifully. No damage there at all. Case back also is quite decent. It's got a few little teeny tiny pits, but that's it. Here's the calendar side of the plate. You can see there's that big old jewel right there. That's your lower mainspring arbor jewel, and uh, that's it. It's such a lovely and simple system. S lovely, simple system. But just like the case, it's strong and it works. Simple does not mean crude. Starting to come back together. Uh, it's always nice to get to this point and you can test the and just see how the train runs. I mean, I know how the train runs, but it should you should be able to just put a little bit of, even just touch it and it should spin. And it certainly does that and more. You can see the free running train right there. And then you see the gearing on the mainspring barrel sitting right at the top of the gearing for the center wheel. And that's where we want it to be. That's something I always check whenever I do a... <sighs> Arbor jewel because you want to make sure you didn't move that one way or the other, and if it's out of alignment, you don't want that. And she rolls. So now I'm going to go 
And uh, some some people, they like to assemble the whole train and have the train start to run in. Uh, for me, I don't know, my, my thing, I like to drop the balance last. Uh, that's just me. So I'm looking at the calendar side of things ugh, now. Um, again, one of the things that's a real joy about these is their simplicity. And again, simplicity doesn't mean crude. It means it, it can mean simplicity is the central piece of elegance. And that's where we're at. When you get to the... The Achilles works and the time setting and date correction and stuff like that. Um, like if you're looking at a 6138 or a 6105, you know, one of the Sua pieces, it'll have all this stuff. Everything is screwed down and multi, multi-piece levers with gears on the top and the bottom and swinging friction grips and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, even the, the spring uh, for date correction is screwed into place. This isn't. This is the, that's the a combination of, of, that's the entire spring and selector and everything else like that and it's literally it sits on this post and it's tucked in under there that's it N no screws of any kind it just drops in right there and then the rest of this stuff is super simple sorry for the noise as always i like to say i mean the kids are home and so you know take it's it's a little loud oh would you stop it so like this is your, you know, instead of having like a setting lever and uh, all those multiple, multiple pieces, combination click spring and everything else like this, this is taking, this one piece here takes the, pe the place of like five or six or seven different components depending. And this one, it just drops in place right there, just like that. You can sort of spring this back a little bit. I can do this through my camera. one second I'm trying to do this I'm trying to be clever here there it is and then we can you can see how those work there's your click 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 that's for your time setting and that's where that goes and when I draw this out this will drop into this channel on the stem and then the next thing of course is you do have this little retainer dealy with two springs if I can get a handle on it So that, again, goes right on here, and the whole thing's held together with one screw. It's extremely simple and a very strong, strong solution. It's not prone to failure. It lasts well. Come on, get over here. Just like that, see? I've got to lubricate all this stuff first, though. I'm not going to screw that down just yet. Okay, so calendars in place uh everything was free running so i have the dial on there and everything else like that looks looking good just wanna yeah, just for fun we spin it up again there's that clearance i'm always looking at the the teeth of the barrel and where it intersects with the center wheel yeah. okay so let me do the next oh, here's one thing that's neat I always like to show if I can. This is the pallet fork. And Seiko's commitment to really improving the movement was such, they went so far to lighten the pallet fork. Look, it's it's actually, it's cast hollow on the inside to reduce the amount of weight it's got. Really amazing bit of work to put into such a small piece. Okay, time to drop this in. Just like that. I'm gonna let that sit there for a second. And I'm kind of at the end of my day, but obviously we can see that it is running, which is a good thing. So let me check one thing. Okay, here we are, we're at initial numbers. You can see we've got a lot of beat error, uh, but the signal's pretty clean. Let's see what I can do here. Maybe I can make things better. I move it just a little bit and I see if it gets better or worse. It looks like it's going to be worse. Yes. You start to pull it in.
Okay. So I am going to leave this now and let this run in. Get everything all slopped around, but that's a good initial adjustment. And let's see what happens to the numbers tomorrow. Let's see how it looks tomorrow. Okay, I'm knocking off for the night. Uh, just one last check on the numbers before I go. And, I don't know, it's numbers are coming up and that's what we want. Cool. Hi, Kenneth. Okay, so there we are. Such great movements. Such elegant watches. So straightforward and simple. They're just, I don't know, they're basically a perfect watch. Now this is, this piece is a single language, so it doesn't have a quick set for the day. Uh, you just roll it over midnight for the day, but the date, it does have a quick set. You just pull and turn, pull and click out, and you can turn like so, just like that. You put it back in. It does still, the case has still some hazing from the previous owner. He never cleaned the watch. And what happens when that happens is it can, if you're in a moist environment, it can hold moisture and you get, you can get pitting as a result. So it's got this sort of hazing on here, which you can see, especially over here, you can see it, but it's not functional and it's not going to do anything to the watch itself. And as I said before, all the ceiling surfaces are good. So you don't need to worry about that either. This Dany Loom, by the way, will still glow for a little while. That's another nice thing. What a beautiful dial. It's amazing too, is people don't, I mean, this is the same color and shade and radial pattern as the 62 MASs. It's just a really nice watch. Okay, well, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye.